to Our Lady Lewis Parish in Massapequa Park, New York. I'm Monsignor Jim Santi, delighted you're joining us for the sixth Sunday in Ordinary Time. And this is a special weekend for us at Our Lady of Lourdes in that we celebrate her patronal feast this weekend, and we're delighted that you're sharing that time with us as well. Let's begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And to better celebrate Mass, let's take a moment to look into our hearts and to confess our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned. In my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, of a virgin, all of the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. And so we pray. Let us pray that everything we do will be guided by God's law to love one another. God, our Father, you have promised to remain forever with us and with those who try to be just and do what is right. Help us always to live in your divine presence. And we ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the one who trusts in human beings, who seeks his strength in flesh, whose heart turns away from the Lord. He is like a barren bush in the desert that enjoys no change of season, but stands in a lava waste, a salt and empty earth. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is in the Lord, he is like a tree planted beside the waters that stretches out its roots to the stream. It fears not the heat when it comes, its leaves stay green. In the year of drought, it shows no distress, but still bears fruit. The word of the Lord. Said I fail, O oh, hope in the Lord. Blessed are they, O oh, hope in the Lord. Blessed the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked, nor walks in the way of sinners, nor sits in the company of the insolent, but delights in the law of the Lord, and meditates on his law day and night. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. He is like a tree planted. 
plant near running water that yields its fruit in due season and whose leaves never fade whatever he does prospers blessed are they who hope in the Lord not so the wicked not so they are like chaff which the wind drives away for the Lord watches over the way of the just but the way of the wicked vanishes blessed are they who hope in the Lord a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians Brothers and sisters, if Christ is preached as raised from the dead, how can some among you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If the dead are not raised, neither has Christ been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is vain. You are still in your sins. Then those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are the most pitiable people of all. But now Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. The word of the Lord. and be glad your reward will be great in heaven Alleluia 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 My friends, the Lord be with you A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke Glory Glory to you, O Lord Jesus came down with the twelve and stood on a stretch of level ground with a great crowd of his disciples and a large number of the people from all Judea and Jerusalem and the coastal region of Tyre and Sidon. And raising his eyes toward his disciples, he said, Blessed are you who are poor, for the kingdom of God is yours. Blessed are you who are now hungry, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who are now weeping, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude and insult you and denounce your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice and leap for joy on that day. Behold, your reward will be great in heaven. For their ancestors treated the prophets in the same way. But woe to you who are rich. For you have received your consolation, and woe to you who are filled now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will grieve and weep, and woe to you when all speak well of you, for their ancestors treated the false prophets in the same way. And this is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Just to begin by, again, reiterating what we are celebrating here in Our Lady of Lourdes Parish, and there are so many Our Lady of Lourdes Parishes around the world dedicated to Our Lady and her appearance at Lourdes in France, and to good St. Bernadette. I always like to mention in celebrating the feast, obviously the greatness of Our Lady in appearing to us and teaching us as she did, but also the bravery, the courage, the tenacity of St. Bernadette that she had the capacity to say, no, I know what I saw was real. I met Our Lady, and this was her message. And you know, she didn't just get beat up by the civil authorities, but by the church as well. 
and they threatened her in every way. You better recant that you admit now that you never met this lady, our lady. This is all a myth you created in your head. And she, she held firm and she took incredible emotional and spiritual abuse because what she saw was real. And finally the church and probably many people in civil society came to see this was not a myth, it was real. And that this young, amazing woman had held fast to what was revealed to her and we're all better because of that. So just know there are going to be times when people don't buy what you're saying spiritually. Who cares? If it's real and genuine and rooted in Christ and his mother, you hang in there like Bernadette did. So I, I like to celebrate on the Feast of Our Lady Lords, obviously the greatness of Mary, the mother of Jesus, and her appearance in Lord. But I also want, importantly, to remember to celebrate St. Bernadette I had a good friend who was sick many years ago. He was way too sick, way too young, a priest, and uh, a good bishop had the tenacity and smarts to send him to Lourdes where he entered into the baths and was, uh, was cleansed, not of his physical illness, but all the anger and, and anxiety he had. Why me? Why so young? Why am I facing this reality of death? And the anger and the anxiety were taken from him there are so many wonderful miracles that have come about through Our Lady of Lourdes, but in my friend's case, it wasn't physical cure. It was having the anxiety, the fear, and, and, and the anger that he'd been filled with because of his young diagnosis. And here he was freed from that. Our Lady can do amazing things, the Lady who appeared at Lourdes. Okay, let's go into these readings. Let's go first to Jeremiah. Blessed is he who trusts in the Lord. You know, I hear people say, especially those who love their pets, that, you know, there's a reason you call a dog man's or woman's best friend. As one guy said to me once, you know, people will let you down, but my dog never has. Uh, he, he was uh, really inconsolable when he found out that the dog he'd been uh, taking care of for 16 years, and maybe the dog that was taking care of him for 16 years, was about to pass. And, you know, I, I've had uh, pets throughout my life, but I've never had quite the dedication to a pet that many of my friends do. And what they say is kind of true, right? Um, you know, our, our pets don't have moods where they turn on you or they don't, they don't forgive you because you didn't walk them rightly. Uh, you know, it's really true that uh, people you, don't, you can't count on people all the time. They'll let you down. But that your pet, on the other hand, is someone you can always count on. The truth is, in life... People will sometimes be there for us and sometimes not be there for us. If you build your life on finances, there are going to be times when you have a lot of money and there may be times when the money could all be gone and you could be broke. You know, if you're counting on your job to give your life meaning, what happens when you retire? Or what happens when you lose the job? Human condition, whether it's about employment or about other people or about money or all the things we think are important in life, they can be there one day and gone the next. But this reading is saying there's one person, one reality you can depend on who will never let you down, who will never desert you, who will never not be enough. And that's our, our Lord, our God. And we're being reminded by Jeremiah that if you depend on earthly things, you're setting yourself up for a fall. Because the truth is earthly things in the end always pass, often let us down, often can't be counted on, often are here today and gone tomorrow. But our God says, I'm not here for a little while. I'm here with you always and forever, no matter what. So surrender to him, Jeremiah says, and you will always have a force to underpin and support and encourage you. You know, when we get ordained priests, it's an interesting thing we do. And I know uh, when I was ordained and I was doing the prostration, which is where you, you lie on the ground, basically saying my whole body, my whole self, my whole being is given to the service of God. I remember seeing uh, in pictures that were taken at the time both my mom and one of my sisters crying because they thought this powerful symbol was a total surrender of our lives to God. But I've said to them often, it is. That's what it's meant to be, this prostration uh, where you, you lie on the floor and give your whole life to God. But here's the good part, is you're not just giving your life to him. He's also nurturing, supporting, encouraging, and upholding your life. See, we, we priests, when we give our lives over to God, it's not a bad deal because we're giving ourselves over to that one person who will never disappoint us, never let us down, never let us fall, always carries us, 
even in those times we cannot carry ourselves, when I cannot take that next step, he's there to do the carrying that gets me through to the next step, whether I make it or he makes it for me. In life, people often will disappoint you. In life, money will not always be there. In life, your job will not always give your life meaning. But there is one force, one reality, one person who will never let us down, Jeremiah says, and that's the Lord our God. Okay, let's go to the second reading. Not a whole lot to say about this second reading, except this. I told you once before uh, about the wonderful woman, Jill, my Jewish friend who came to a funeral and said, I love what you Catholics say about death and resurrection. And it's so comforting. I wish that in, in our religion, she said, we had more words of comfort like that when we lose somebody we love. And I said to her, Jill, they are comforting words. I know that. But we don't say them because they're comforting. We say them because they're true. And the truth of the resurrection is what St. Paul affirms in this reading. He says to us, now this is a hard thing to, to hear. He says, if Christ has not been raised from the dead, if there's no life beyond this life, then like forget about everything. Just go enjoy your life and, and forget about faith and forget about trust in God. Because it isn't a myth. It is real. I had a seminary professor, he's no longer a priest, but he said to us once, you know, if they found the body tomorrow and there wasn't any bodily resurrection, no big deal, it's just a spiritual resurrection. And I beg to differ with my old theology professor. It would matter very much if they found the body tomorrow because it's not just a spiritual resurrection. See, when Jesus says to you at, at uh, the Last Supper and to me, take and eat, this is my body, this is my blood, He's not speaking in an allegorical way. He's not saying it's kind of like my body, it's kind of like my blood. When Jesus tells you something, you can take it to the bank. So when he says, this is my body, this is my blood, he means that it really is. In the same way, when he promises us resurrection, when he says death is conquered, he means it. It's not just a nice idea. Resurrection is real. You and I are going to meet God face to face. This life is only part of the story. The, the main part of our life is yet to come. Our life in glory, our life in heaven. So St. Paul is saying to us, this isn't just a nice idea. This isn't just a comforting thought. Death is conquered by Christ. Resurrection is real. The afterlife is true. Heaven is for real. And that God willing, you and I will meet our Lord and all the people we love in the life yet to come. I say to my friend Jill what I say to you. Our comforting words at funerals about death and resurrection are not just comforting. They're also true. Okay, finally we go to the gospel. And this is a, an interesting translation too. We've, we've all heard, you know, the Beatitudes, but they're sometimes a little sweeter than this one. This is kind of cutting to the chase in some of the promises. Uh, you weep, well, you will laugh. Uh, you, you stand by me in this life, and you will have the fullness of life in, yet, in the world yet to come. Uh, what he's saying to us, if I can translate into real terms, he's saying to us, you stand by me, you be loyal and true, you live your faith, you don't give me away when it's not comfortable, and I'm promising you the reality is that you're going to heaven because I remember those who have been loyal and true. You know, whether they're Republicans or they're Democrats, there's so many Catholics in name only out there. You know, they have their principles and beliefs, but they give them away when they conflict with their political uh, hopes and dreams, their ambitions. And I think to them and to you and me, when we water down our principles, the Lord is saying to us in no uncertain terms, you got to choose here. You're either with me or you're against me, but you, you can't have it both ways. You can't run around saying, I'm a Catholic in good standing, but I really don't buy or teach or live by the teachings of Christ. And so anytime we compromise human life, whether it's the preborn child or the person on death row, what are we talking about? How do I say I'm a Catholic Christian which teaches in no uncertain terms that all life at every stage of development is sacred? How can I say that I stand with Christ, but I hate the illegal immigrant? How can I say that I stand with Christ, but I want to push the button on the electric chair for the person who's done wrong? How can I say I stand with Christ who said, woe to him who hurts the little ones, but I'm going to support the nine runs right through abortion? And I think I'm still a Catholic in good standing. Shame on Democrats and Republicans and all of us 
who only stand with him when it's convenient and easy. Remember he says in the second part of this gospel, woe to you when all speak well of you. What he's saying to us is, you stand with me and you're not always going to be popular. You stand with me and people will reject you. You stand with me and you may occasionally may be powerless, but you stand with me and you're going to heaven. You stand with me and you will receive an eternal reward. You stand with me and you're doing what is right and true. I think for all of us, we've got to make a decision along the way. Who am I going to stand with? The world, which fades and passes away, or with my Lord and Savior, who is ever faithful, ever true, and asks us to try to be the same. Okay, final thought. You know, when I do wrong, I have found in my long life, as maybe you have, it's never good to lie about it. It's never good to cover up. It's never good to equivocate. When you and I do wrong, it's best to say, I did wrong. You go to confession, there's a reason. The first thing we're supposed to say is very simply, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. And what are we saying right up front? I know that I did wrong, and that's why we're here to talk, because I know you represent Alta Christi, another Christ, and I'm bringing you my wrong. I'm putting it right up front. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. It's denial of that when we try to equivocate that we get into trouble. We are called on to admit right up front, these are my mistakes, these are my wrongs. Why do I mention that? Because this week, two very public figures faced the mistakes of their past. One was Pope Benedict, who looked back on his time as Archbishop of Munich and admitted that back in the late 70s, early 80s, when he was Archbishop, that he didn't do right, that he had several priests who were legitimately accused of hurting children, and he didn't do right in terms of making sure that they were removed so that they wouldn't hurt children again. In other words, he enabled some bad priests to do bad things. And now here he is in his 90s coming to terms with the report that's just come out of Munich that says he handled it badly. And I want to talk about how he responded to that. And then we have, on the other hand, former Governor Andrew Cuomo who is accused of abusing women who work for him and who is also responsible for thousands of people being put into nursing homes where they unnecessarily died from COVID. So we have two people who are facing the accusation of having made serious and sinful mistakes. And I'm going to suggest to you that if you want to learn how to handle admission of the things that you and I do wrong, that we have a great example in one and a very bad example in another. We're supposed to say, I did wrong, and take responsibility. The mature Christian says, I know I did wrong, and I apologize. So we have Catholic, in name at least, Andrew Cuomo, who says, no, 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 no. I didn't do wrong. The women are all lying. All 11 of them are lying. Never happened. I wouldn't do that. And you're going to see that I'm right and they're wrong. And I refuse to take responsibility for sending people to their deaths in the nursing home. And on top of that, no, I'm not finished with politics, and I shouldn't have resigned, and I'm not sorry for anything. Wow. You want to stand before God someday and have him say to you, so that apology was no apology? There was no sorrow, no regret, no willingness to own your own actions? Forget about it, Andrew. That's not the way to handle it. But then we have this Pope of ours who could have said, the very easy way out would have been to say, well, you know, back then, this is the way we handle things. And we just thought by sending a priest for therapy, he could be cured and we could put him back around children. That's what a lot of people say. Well, back then, things were different. And they were. That is what the bishops were being advised to do back then. But he doesn't. He owns it and says what happened in terms of the abuse in Munich and the abuse around the world of our young people is a terrible, terrible stain and sin I want to read for you specifically what Pope Benedict had to say about the mistake he made, many bishops made, many people in the church made in not protecting children. In all my meetings, especially during my many apostolic journeys, I met with victims of sexual abuse by priests. I have seen at first hand the effects of a most grievous fault. And I have come to understand that we ourselves are drawn into this grievous fault whenever we neglect it or fail to confront it with the necessary decisiveness and responsibility as too often happened and continues to happen. 
As in those meetings, once again, I can only express to all the victims of sexual abuse my profound shame, my deep sorrow, and my heartfelt request for forgiveness. I have had great responsibilities in the Catholic Church. All the greater is my pain for the abuses and the errors that occurred in those different places during the time of my mandate. Each individual case of sexual abuse is appalling and irreparable. The victims of sexual abuse have my deepest sympathy and I feel such great sorrow for each individual case. Listen to what he says. My shame, my deep sorrow, my heartfelt request for forgiveness. The Holy Father who made some serious mistakes owns responsibility. The former governor of New York does not. I have made terrible mistakes in my life. You probably have too. We're being encouraged, I think, by these models, these examples, to own responsibility for who we are, what we've done, not to hide, not to obfuscate, but to me, not only in confession, but in our public life. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. And the only way to healing is by the admission of our wrongs and accepting responsibility. Bravo to Pope Benedict for not shirking, but rather embracing responsibility for the sins of the church. May we all have the freedom to admit our wrong, to confess our sins, and by doing that, to find healing. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now with confidence in God's goodness and eternal love, let's offer our prayers of petition. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. That as the church proclaims Christ risen from the dead, all people of the world may find new hope in the gospel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That Christ's love for the poor, the hungry, and the sorrowful may inspire his disciples in their global efforts to care for every human need, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God may give joy to those who are persecuted for fighting abortion, euthanasia, war, and capital punishment, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That those in our parish and family members who are ill may enjoy the consolation of the Lord and the presence of their loved ones, especially Anthony Di Giovanni, Joe Amarin, Kathy Orofino, Kimberly Cusack, Marie Cariola, Bob Murphy, Timothy Cavaccini, Nicole Tosan, Alex Truzzieri, Judy Aloco, Ayl Liebolt, and Sheila Villani. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Thomas Jude Porfido, Porfidio, Judith Clary, Donald B. Malloy, Fred Peritori, Christopher Abati Marco, Eida Schmidt, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the intentions of this Mass, Christine Murphy, Lillian Dunlop, St. Joseph's Book of Remembrance, Lydia Icangelo, Vincent Asuro, 
the intention of Deacon Sal and Faye Marino, William Pesek, Thomas Laquadara, Dennis Puglio, and Corinne Locke, whom we remember at this Eucharist, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And bear with me as I mention other intentions in terms of healing and the need for healing. I want to pray for Wyatt Jandovitz, a young baby who's having eye surgery this week. I pray among the sick for Peter Visconti and Bill Kershaw. I pray for Margaret Lasanti and Doug Ahoto, Barbara Turley, baby Emily Quart. I pray for Barbara Trulio, Edith Consiglio, Mary Littress, Veronica Tucker, Thomas Lauer, Carol Nolan. I pray for all of those who are suffering from addiction of any kind. I pray too for Kevin Shields and George Gill, Michael Cataldi, Michael Cardone, Charlene Eisencraft, Noah Torelli, Laura Lishan, Georgie Ritter, Al and Angelo Clementi, Gary Hudson, Michael Campagna, Laura Elizabeth Steele, Anthony Pastorino, Dennis Sweeney, Bob Telasco, my friend Vern, Amelia Alaka, Rita Pizzi. I pray as well for Sean McGrail. Let me pray for Ronald Butler and my friend Steve Gagliardi. For Kevin Bayon, Kevin, it was great to be with you this week, and we keep you very close to our hearts. For Byron DeMilo and for um, Kelly Schultz, I pray as well for Dorothy, the mom to Sheila Blanchard, for Russell Castro Giovanni, for Cara Mooney McElderry. I pray among the sick for Loretta Sweeney and for Roseanne Simone and Barbara Simone. I pray for Dave Walsh, Anthony Scotto, Jim Harmon, Judge Tony Falanga. Pray for Heidi Ignoski, Van Tutwiler, Cecilia Lasanti, my mom, Leanne Lasanti, my cousin, Vita D'Amico, Ron Citrano, Jim Barr. I pray for Howie Pomerantz, and I pray too for the consolation of Howie's family over the loss of Howie's dad. For Anthony Kremi, for Nancy Lang, for Joan Donovan, for Dean McDonald, for Marilyn Arbogast, and Nancy Palumbo. For Pat McTaggart, Melissa Bergman, Ann Mindus, Nick Castellano, Jorge Clemente, Anthony Ponte, Emma Nicole. I pray among the sick for uh, baby Owen Andrews, for Kathy Bordego, Bordengo, Kathy, you know who I mean, for Lorenzo Bronzini, for Brian Bronzini, for Tommy Swengross. I pray for Lacey Ward, Michael Messina, Drew Layton, Mary and Pat Sears. I pray for Lou Imperioli, my good friend. Pray for Kathy Orfino again, for Elise Patricia McGrail, for Edith Consiglio, Michael and Zachary Chanover, Marion Barone, Joey Silvestri. I pray among the sick for Millie Bolando and Mary Rao and Marie Tenay and Bill Franca and Bella Glauda, Dennis M. Dow, Jennifer Murphy, Dennis Donovan, Jamie Scotto. Pray for Carly Fregola, John O'Brien, for Joseph Grafeo. Uh, and for all the sick, including Joseph Sardone and Janet Paradiso. And among those who have died, I pray for uh, Sophia Maglione, Nicholas Hilario, Bill Kelly, Catherine and William Donovan, Richard Rosmarin, Billy and Michael Sarasoli, Lorraine and Ray Campbell, Don Spitali, Nicholas and Sally Cordero. Again, my dear friend, Corinne Locke. I pray for John and Maureen and Ann Raber, for Joseph McGrath and Arlene Wolfarth, for Mary and Ed Raber, Chuck DeHart, John Slade, Mary and Joseph Monopoly, John and Alma Kappa, Fel Morali, John Neeson, Michael Manzella, Kenny Bolando, Christina Formato, Cynthia Prague, Caroline Dodaro, Gaetano, Sal and Angelo Emelo, Anthony Preziosi. I pray for Kevin Brown, Pauline Romano, Ed and June Jandovitz, Mary and Charlie Nobile, Linda Nobile O'Brien, Sam and Rose Bacora, John Simone. I pray for Rocco Pasola, Irene Romano, and Marjorie Geary. I pray for Nick Sabo and Nicholas James Albertson, for Luigi Antonio Rosmini, for Gemma Stampa Rosmini, for Ernie Medits, for Anthony, pardon me, for Nancy Murphy, for Elizabeth Perry Sobel, for Anne Maria Tenay, Billy Taylor, and for dear and wonderful Monica Kerrison. I pray for Robbie Purick and Jim Purick. I pray for Regina Robinson, Joan and John Donnelly, Jimmy Soldo. I pray for Richard Jackal, Henry Meyer, Colin and Tommy Ryan, Barry Champney, Eleanor Mazzi, Monsignor John Alessandro, Brian Hussey, Suzanne Scanio, Mary Rose and John Brosnan, Ronald Chiapo. I pray for Leon Sherman Jr., Kate Kelly, Marie Sicolo, Connie and Sal Cusimano, Norbert Baby, Norbert Bobby Gomez, Monsignor Tom Spadaro, I pray for Ted Scorcia and Mike Scorcia. I pray for Jerry Monk, 
Vincent Castorio Jr., Dave Robin, Thomas O'Shea, Matthew Toriello. Pray for Marie Austin, Emily LaFaso, Vita Palmieri, Kathleen Smith, John Arturi, Raymond Kennedy, Connor and Will Robles, and Mary Ohodo. I pray among the dead for Luigi Conti and Tracy Wachowski, for Dale Louise Odom, for Joe and Marion Bacigalupo, for Elmer Schantz, Alexander Ahaliasas, for Pat Sistar, Peggy Barr, Marvin Klein, Jerry and Edward Casal, John McMacken, Raymond Hussey, Judge Don Belfi, Nicholas Lasanti, Tino DiBello, Joe and Joan Largan. I pray as well for Joe and Joan Largan's daughter Maureen. I pray for Father Joe Lukaszewski, Father Ken Marks, Father Tim Hurton, Paul Stashut, and all the deceased members of the Stashut family. I pray for dear old Ed Almer, and I always remember his wonderful caretaker wife, Betty. Gary and Mike Scorcia, Marilyn Salonia, Nick Martone, Constance Polio, Jerry and Michael Pangalo, Captain Tim Murray, Dottie Lauer, Norma Calabrese, John Glauder, Joseph Lovett, Carolyn, Lynn Deval, Marie Casavecchi, Scotty and Nina Passarelli, Bob and Pat Caliban, Tom Sully O'Sullivan, Joe and Peggy Bauman. I pray for Joseph P. Callahan and Lynn Lane, Ed Birch, Mike Goff, I pray too for Virginia Kegney. I pray for Carmela Labolita, for Peter Gannon, Margaret and Katie O'Connor, Ben Julik, Tommy Engelhart, Victor and Lillian, Bobby and Marge, Tom and Helen, Barlow and Ethel. I pray for Edward Riker and Danny Carlson. I pray for Luke Johnson, Evelyn Lalicki, P.J. O'Rourke, and Frank Kilgannon. I pray for Robert and Joan Cook, Anna Gomes, Paul Struzieri, Ernie Metz, Anna and Peter Canal. I pray for Sister Mary Angela Buser. I pray for Christine Lisa, Leonardo Playa, Donato Forlenza, Aniello Ferrara, Marie Hoyecki. I pray for Marion Harrington, for Marie Gail Penny, and for Margaret Freeland. I also pray for Michael A. Diorio, for Captain John Minatoli, for Louise McNeil, for Lena Lasanti, for Mary Uli, for Genevieve Minatoli, for Virginia Denner, and all of our brothers and sisters who sleep in Christ, including Richard Fasano, Christopher Laybourne, Adina Placido, Helen Kadash, pray for Bruna Soper, for Jack Carroll, for Madeline Alari, for Anna Malandro, for James Zidi. I pray as well for Mindy Singer, for Lorraine DeRico, Joseph Nestor Mondello, Joseph Paul Walweber, and for Vernon Oliver Harmon. I pray too for all of our men and women in the armed forces and for their safety and well-being. I pray for our men and women in the armed forces who have laid down their lives for our freedoms. I pray for firefighters and police officers, remembering especially Connor Lasanti, as well as Thomas Scanio. I pray for our EMTs, our doctors and our nurses, especially those who continue to fight COVID. I pray for your intentions and mine, and I ask you to join me in turning them all over to the Mother of God our patroness, who we especially celebrate this week, Our Lady of Lourdes. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me from all of my sin. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice will be found acceptable to God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands to the praise and the glory of his name for our good and the good of all his church. Lord, we make this offering in obedience to your holy word. May it cleanse us and renew us and lead us to our eternal reward. We ask all of this in the name of Jesus the Lord. 
My friends, the Lord be with you. With your Lift up your hearts. Up Let us give Lord. thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks and praise. You never cease to call us to a new and more abundant life. God of love and mercy, you're always ready to forgive. We know we are sinners, and yet you invite us to trust in your mercy. Time and time again, we broke your covenant, but you never abandoned us. Instead, through your son Jesus, you bind yourself even more closely to the human family by a bond that can never be broken. And so, in wonder and with gratitude, we join our voices with the choirs of heaven to proclaim the power of your love and to sing of our salvation in Christ. Holy, holy, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Father, from the beginning of time, you have always done what is good for us so that we might be holy as you are holy. Look with kindness on your people gathered here today before you and send forth the power of your spirit so that these gifts of bread and wine may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom we have become your sons and your daughters. When we were lost and could not find our way to you, you loved us more than ever. Jesus, your son, innocent and without sin, gave himself into our hands and was nailed to a cross. And yet before he stretched out his arms between heaven and earth in an everlasting sign of your loving covenant, he desired to celebrate the Paschal Feast in the company of his friends and disciples. And so while they're at supper, he took bread. He blessed the bread and broke it. He gave it to his friends saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, Jesus took a chalice filled with the fruit of the vine. Again, Father, he thanked you for your goodness. He gave the chalice to his disciples and friends and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. We do all of this in memory of Jesus Christ, who is our sober and our lasting peace. We celebrate his death and his resurrection, and we look forward to the coming of that day when he will return to give us all the fullness of joy. Therefore, we offer you, God, ever faithful and true, this sacrifice which restores us to your friendship. Father, look with love on those you have called to share in the one sacrifice of Christ, and by the power of your Holy Spirit, make us all into one body and heal us of every division. Keep us always in communion of mind and heart with Francis, our Pope, with John, our Bishop, along with all the bishops, the clergy, the religious, and all of God's people. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until at last we stand in your presence to share in the lives of the saints in the company of Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her devoted spouse, along with all the saints and martyrs and angels who've done your will throughout the ages, including St. Bernadette. Let's pause now to remember all of our brothers and sisters 
all of our relatives and friends who've gone to their rest in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all and make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her devoted spouse, and all the angels and martyrs and saints. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. The resurrection is real, the resurrection is true, and we should be every day thankful for that. In a spirit of thanksgiving, we turn to our God and we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I leave you my peace, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, with faith in your love and mercy, we eat your body and drink your blood. Let it not bring us condemnation, but health in mind and in body. My friends, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to share in everlasting life. our spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Not too many announcements except to say um, I was on a show a guy named Mike Sapricone uh, has on the air this, this past week. And one of the issues for discussion was should people come back to Mass or should they uh, uh, stay watching online? Uh, come home if you can. Come back and worship with us. If you've been uh, vaccinated and you wear a mask, uh, even if the state or government doesn't mandate that you, you want to, do it if you feel comfortable. But come because you're part of the body of Christ and we'd love to pray with you in person. Having said that, I know there are still some of you out there who are wary because of underlying conditions. I know some of you are, are concerned about still the spread of COVID, and some of you are just not ready. And so that's fine. And that's why we will continue to have the online Mass. I'd love for you to come back. I think every pastor would say the same thing, but I certainly understand if you feel it's not yet time for you. Either way, the important thing is that we pray the Mass together, whether it be in person or online. Please, please be a part of the family that keeps on praying for a world that deeply, deeply needs prayer, whether you look to the Ukraine or to Taiwan or to Hong Kong or to the Muslims of Western China. It's a very divided and pained world. And the more we pray together, whether it's online or in person, the better for the whole world. Let's turn to our Lord time and time again. I always like to mention, I'd like you to be with us on the program I have a, a privilege to host called Personally Speaking with Monsignor Jim Lasanti. It's heard on, uh, on Sirius XM on the Catholic Channel, Channel 129, three times on Sunday. But also you can get it by just going to your computer and going to YouTube and punching in Personally Speaking with Monsignor Jim Lasanti. Our guest this week and next week is the actor Joe Montegna. Um, you know Joe from so many things, probably most often Criminal Mind and so many movies and TV shows, but he now has a, a show on Amazon called As We See It about what it's like to be autistic. And it's personal to Joe who has a daughter who's autistic and that's why he took the role as the father of a son who is aut has autism. He's a powerful, wonderful actor, but he's also a great, great human being. This is one of those interviews you'll be glad you had a chance to listen to or to watch. So Joe Montagna, the great actor, on Personally Speaking. Let's pray. Lord and God, you have given us food from heaven. May we always hunger for this, the bread and wine of eternal life. We ask you to grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you and your families in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. And who believe in me shall not thirst. No one can come to me unless the Father begins. And I will raise you up. And I will raise you up. And I will raise you up. 